Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming by. Guess what? This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. This is episode 297. And today, you will get not one, but two episodes as we talk about the television sensation, I think we can call it, Cobra Kai. Hang on just a moment. I'll tell you exactly what I mean. If you're new to the show, you may not recognize my voice. I'm Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for this show. I'm the founder over at Whistlekick. You can find us at whistlekick.com. You can find the show at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And we bring you two episodes every week. An interview on Monday. We bring you a topic show on Thursday. All because I love martial arts. And hopefully you love martial arts. In fact, if you've been listening for a while, I'm going to guess that either you really love martial arts or you're maybe entranced at the sound of my voice. I'm not sure what other options there are. Maybe there are some other options. If you listen for reasons other than those two things, you can go ahead, you can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. And of course, I would love to hear any of your less sarcastic feedback that you might have. I love hearing from listeners. It's great. Makes my day. All right. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Two episodes? What, what could I mean by two episodes? Here's the deal. I recorded an episode a little over a week ago about Cobra Kai. Just me. Just chatting it up by myself for you know, 15 minutes or so, offering my thoughts on the show that's come out on YouTube Red, Cobra Kai. But I did that, and I forgot that I had scheduled time to talk with Sensei Scott Bolin and Master Brennan Goodall about Cobra Kai. We had agreed several weeks ago, and it took us some time to find a mutual time slot on our calendars. But we did that just a couple days ago, And as we're recording it, I realized, hey, wait a second, I've already done this. And it left me wondering, what do I do? There was too much overlap to release it as two separate episodes. That seemed silly. But at the same time, I didn't want to just toss what I had recorded in case there was something in there that somebody else wanted to listen to. Of course, it wasn't cool enough to make it some bonus episode or or anything like that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to run the episode with Scott, Brendan, and I first. And then if you want to stick around, you can listen to my thoughts that I recorded prior. You'll hear some differences. You'll hear a lot of similarities. And you'll likely be able to hear some of the evolution of my thoughts, my ideas, because I, again, recorded the solo episode first and then talked to Scott and Brendan. So here we go as the three of us talk about Cobra Kai. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. I'm sure I've recorded some kind of introduction that is going to give you more context, so I'll just kind of jump right into it. Here we are with Sensei Scott Bolin and Master Brendan Goodall. It's, it's weird because, you know, I talked to both of you guys enough, and obviously when we're just chatting, we're not we're not using titles or last names or anything, so it's it's fun <laughs> to say all of those words all together in one grouping as we are together to talk today about Cobra Kai. Oh yeah. Looking forward to it. Me too. I was definitely psyched when Scott asked me if I wanted to do this with you guys. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, you know, a couple, couple ground rules to get out of the way for anybody that's listening. That might be wondering, first off, we are not going to spoil anything. We are going to work with more overarching themes of the show. We're going to talk about, how this show relates to martial arts, to martial artists, to the way non-martial artists re- see martial arts and martial artists. You know, we're really looking at this from a, a broader contextual view, kind of in the same way that we've often unpacked the original Karate Kid movie on this show. So, you know, Sensei, I want to kick this over to you because... You know, you kind of organized this. I, I, I think you were the one that said, hey, we need to talk about this. And maybe at the time it was just because, you know, you started watching and you're like, ah, I need to be able to discuss this with people. But if nothing else, we are talking about it now. So what were some of your initial impressions of the show? What, what was it? What was the first 15 minutes like for you? Um, Gosh, the first 15 minutes. It was like an ear to ear smile. Um, watching something, you know, it's it is Johnny, 
the same guy from way back when. It is Daniel. It's like, I'm going to use an 80s reference for this because it's like finding that old jean jacket in your closet and it still fits perfectly. It is such a throwback to childhood. I, I mean, that's, there it is. And Master Goto, I know we've got a couple years on you, but would you agree? I would. I think for me, the difference is um, the Karate Kid original movie never had the same sort of impact on me because I missed all of the hype behind it and I had to watch it on TV for the first time. So I liked the idea of them doing a Cobra Kai show, but I was like, I don't really need it. I'll watch it if it comes around in a way that I don't have to spend any money for it. But it definitely blew all of my expectations out of the water with what they were doing and how the show progressed. And I think that that's kind of the common theme when I hear people talking about it is expectation. I don't know what everyone's expectations were. I don't think I had any conversations with anyone about what expectations for Cobra Kai were going to be. But that's universally what I'm hearing from everyone is that it exceeded expectations. And I know for me, that's certainly true, but I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I wasn't expecting much. I was expecting something that maybe just kind of rode on the concept, you know, something gimmicky. What do you guys think? Um, I, I actually, I've told more than a few people now, uh, personal friends and whatnot, you know, this show could have been half as good and I would have been very happy with it. Um, it could have been, you know, literally nothing more than, uh, what would that be about 10 total hours of just calling back to the originals? Um, you know, kind of like those, uh, those obvious wink and nods, you know, to this scene or that scene, but it was, in the best, most surprising way, it was so much better than just that. I'm sure those were there, um, but it was so well written. The acting was really good. Um, you know, unlike maybe some of the, uh, you know, the the fight scenes from the original, uh, the fight scenes in this were they looked like unpolished in the way that you might expect, you know, maybe like, you know, normal people who practice martial arts here and there, you know, part time, you know, after work, things like that. But it looked good. It looked honest. It looked genuine. It was just I mean, I, I you know, every category I could name, it went way beyond my expectations. And, and how about you, Master Goodall? Yeah, like there's a part of me that feels like this could have been done as like a 15 minute short, but the fact that they wanted to flesh it out and actually see Johnny evolve as a person, see him kind of actually grow up a little bit and see how quickly Daniel tries to grow up, but also at the same time, how fast to like fall back into that. I'm a new kid from Jersey, so I got to be really chippy and have a chip on my shoulder. Like, what they did with it, I wouldn't change a thing, and I'm excited to see what happens in season two. Mm, season two, yeah, and we've we've already seen some. I don't know if we want to call them announcements, but there is an announcement that there will be a season two. I read some really interesting stuff. One of the things that I read was that Cobra Kai has exceeded ratings, however you want to term that, for a large number of shows on both Hulu and Netflix. You know, I, I don't know that, that YouTube could have offered anything on YouTube Red that would have garnered this much interest and support for a brand new platform. I would love to see the sign up numbers for how many people signed up just because of this show. Yeah, I'd heard I'd heard something like 20 million views in the first week alone. Wow, I believe it. Um, I don't know if that's the first episode because the first first two episodes i think were free without signing up yeah you, you know could a nice watch little... those on regular youtube yeah um it was a smart move though absolutely i mean you know i 
I kind of, you know, since I signed up, I kind of looked around on YouTube Reb to see if there was anything else. <laughs> and there's, there's, there's literally, you know, I mean, at my age, you know, maybe in my age group, there's one other show that's not bad. It's, it's not bad at all. It's fun. Would I have paid you for YouTube Red for it though? No. What is it? What's that show? Uh, it's uh, Ryan Hansen solves crimes on TV. Kind of a funny tongue in cheek, you know, uh, breaks the fourth wall, mm. buddy cop, badly paired buddy cop type thing. It's fine. It's not. It wouldn't have moved the needle, mm. so to speak. Now, one of the things I find really fun, kind of interesting about this show, I always wonder where ideas for something like this come from. Obviously, The Karate Kid came out in, what, 1984? So here we are, 34, am I doing the math right? 34 years later, now they decide to do something like this. Obviously, the two big stars, well, two of the three really big stars are back. Of course, Pat Morita has passed away. But as I'm watching, as I watch the general plot, and, and I'm going to talk about this from, you know, kind of a bird's eye view, the idea that, you know, we've switched from the star being Danny to the star being Johnny. Mm -hmm. And that seems pretty significant to me. And as we've gone on, as we've seen this really interesting storyline play out between the two of them where it becomes kind of difficult to say who the protagonist and who the antagonist are who's the good guy here who's the bad guy i can't help but think back to a few episodes of the, the sitcom how i met your mother and for anybody out there that hasn't seen the show that that might be wondering what i'm referencing here there's an episode where neil patrick harris's character barney talks about the Karate Kid and how actually Johnny, who we all tend to see as the villain, is actually the good guy. That here come, you know, this this new kid comes from out of town and he's got this old karate master and beating up him and his friends. And it's actually a pretty cogent argument. And then later on in a couple of the episodes, Billy Zabka comes on and is on the show. And it makes me wonder... Was it this plot line that ultimately led to this show? Was this like a test screening, <laughs> testing out the idea and seeing, I, seeing how I don't it even, flew? I don't think it would have been intentional. I think it would have been, oh, hey, this part played really well. Audiences really dug this. And then, you know, I got to say, Ralph Macchio, he's not doing a whole lot of stuff. William Zabka's yeah. not doing a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. They maybe they still talk. I'm sure it wouldn't be that hard for one of them to get a hold of the other and say, "Hey, what do you think? Should we we try doing something with this? Riding that momentum?" Probably, I'd be intrigued if it was one of them that started it, who initiated it. Like, I guess if you think of actors who hang on to roles too long, and I'm not saying Ralph Macchio or William Zabka did this because there's not 87 Karate Kid movies out there. Who would want this more? Would it be Daniel or would it be Johnny? Who would want their story told? You know, I, I would I think, say, go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's uh, another part of it is, uh, didn't we, aren't there some, there were some pretty big names behind this as far as executive producing, wasn't there? I think, was Will Smith attached to executive Will, producing? Will Smith was attached to executive producing on this. And it was he, kind of makes me hope that someday, you know, Jaden and Jackie Chan will make an appearance as like the big boss at the next tournament. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there, there, are, there are all kinds of places that that could go. Uh, looking through the other names on the credits, you know, I don't see any other names that jump out at me. So it makes me wonder how much of that was really, hey, um, can we put you down as being executive production for this? You know, because it'll get people talking about it, because it will make it seem more more credible. And obviously, that stuff has to happen before the show gets shopped. So for them to go in to YouTube and say, you know, we've got Will Smith on the executive production team, that makes it that look that much better. You know, there's there is the business element to the show. So that's my guess is it, where where that comes in. But yeah, I, I 
I don't know what involvement there may be on the back end because of the the later the remake, if you will, of Karate Kid with Jaden Smith with Jackie Chan and how involved Will Smith was on that picture. I think he was a I think he was a producer on uh the 2010. Yeah, he yeah, he was. He was a producer on that movie too and I wonder if it's you know, maybe there's a a little bit of connective tissue there in the sense of you know, this this is a I mean I've I've admitted it before on my uh, one of the articles I put on Marshall Journal about good martial arts movies. I had no problem with the 2010 Karate Kid movie uh, as it was. The only thing that bothered me is I have a little martial arts OCD and it should be called the Kung Fu Kid. But <laughs> other than that, that's that's literally my only gripe about the movie. I thought it was a you know good way to bring it up to the current day and 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 maybe they felt like. Hey, let's go back to the original characters because they did that with this show. They brought it up to uh, today extremely well. I, I think the 2010 version can also kind of exist on its own. Will Smith's involvement in mm-hmm. Cobra Kai, notwithstanding, because you saw that the Karate Kid didn't work when you didn't have Ralph Macchio, as good or bad as you want to say this two and three were the next karate kid with Hillary Swank was an absolutely horrible movie. (laughs) Yeah, it was. Um, But that was the first movie that all the original creative team was gone. Director, uh, uh, um, uh, the score, uh, the writing team, they were all gone. So that was the first one that I felt like they were like, okay, let's see if we can make a few more bucks. Squeeze this one more time. I think I think we should talk about the let's call it the magic. When we look back, when we mm-hmm. look at the original movie, there's something about that movie that has allowed it to stand the test of time for martial artists, for non martial artists. One of the most interesting things for me about Cobra Kai is that people who love that movie are talking about it again. And a lot of those people who love that movie don't do martial arts, or at least, you know, maybe they dabbled as a child, but they're not martial artists the way the three of us are, the way most folks listening are. And when you really break it down, that movie had terrible acting, terrible writing. (laughs) The cinematography was nothing special. There were no special effects. There are plot holes. The fight scenes aren't, even for the time, anything spectacular. Um, I mean, you, you could argue that the martial arts is, is pretty solid and pretty traditional and practical, but it's not something anybody's ever going to say. My, my favorite martial arts fight scenes are from the Karate Kid. But there was something about it that I expect was relatable for many of us. And I'm curious, when we compare that, all those elements of the original movie, to Cobra Kai, how does Cobra Kai fare? Um, Master Goodall, you go first. All right. For me, it definitely recaptured a lot of the magic for it. Like, I'll admit, I was watching it while I was working out in the morning while the baby was napping. So it's kind of like, all right, I've got this sweet 80s soundtrack going, which is what I had in the original movie. Got some decent fight scenes. I've got, like, watching people develop martial arts skills. I've got very hilarious high school drama coming between two middle-aged men like it recaptured so much of that because i used to watch at least the tournament scene of karate kid before i'd go out and compete just to help get the competitive juices flowing because you know you're the best around is one of those songs that gets you motivated to do stuff so it made me want to watch the original movie again which is something i think they wanted to do I don't know if it's necessary, but it definitely put the Karate Kid back in my head more than it is on a regular basis. I don't know if that answered any question in there. A bit, yeah. Sensei Bowling. Yeah, it, it, um, throughout the whole, uh, season, they had this, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if it's, 
they had this amazing knack for using those callbacks to the old movies. And they didn't, they called back all of them, by the way, even the next Karate Kid. Um, although that reference was extremely thin. And if I, someone hadn't told me at the very, very end of the last episode, there's a very vague reference to it. And if someone hadn't told me, I wouldn't have known it. But they did that where they, they, they used those callbacks, not in a cheesy or tongue in cheek, wink, nod type way. But it was in a very organic way. Um, the use of flashbacks was fantastic. Um, very effective. Uh, they bring that, ma- like you said, magic. And it really does. Um, there's times when some of that music from the original movies comes back into play at a, a very important and uh, intelligent time. Uh, based on what's going on story-wise and you know, various parts of the episodes. And then um, I think they really captured very well the magic of the original. Um, I think the acting and writing are significantly better (laughs) in in this season than they were in the old movies. Um, Martial arts is, like I said, I'd always said I thought that that was pretty good. But um, but I think it's knowing when to keep it in the here and now, um, you know, as far as. You know, that, you know, kids are on social media, uh, high school life is different, you know, whatever. But then also when to call back to the original movies, when to call back to those timeless lessons that mattered then and they still matter now. I think they did a fantastic job with that. Who was this series written for? That was the question that kept coming to mind when I was watching it, because all three of us enjoyed it. And I think from what. I've read and, and heard speaking to others. It's getting a, a lot of press. It's getting a lot of acclaim. I don't think I've really seen anyone who's watched it, who's been really down on it. But generally, when when music's made or a book is written, when a TV show is produced, there's a target audience. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that I can't figure out here. Who is the target audience for this show? I, I, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I think it's obvious that it was made for, uh, people of our general generation, you know, grew up in the eighties and the nineties, you know, whatever. But I'd almost say that I think they found a way to hit everybody. And my son, he, um, I was watching one of the episodes early in the morning um, and he comes down, you know, getting ready. Of course, he's like a zombie at that point and he's 10 and, you know, he does Taekwondo with uh, me and my daughter and he's l- watching it a little bit and he's like, can we watch this together, dad? And I was like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can sit down and watch it. And he's like, but I want to watch the original movies first. And it's like, I mean, he watched, I don't know, five minutes of it randomly, just just pick five random minutes and deep into the season. And he already wants to watch it. I, so I uh, my answer is almost a non answer in the sense that I think that I think they found a way to hit more than one target audience. I don't think they um, I think they wanted to get us, you know, people who are now adults, but were kids back then. But somehow they managed to pull it off. Master I, I I know you're, you're a big fan of movies. You you've been doing some movie reviews over at Marshall Journal, so you know what are you thinking about this? I don't think they made it for us the lifelong martial artists because ratings and everything show like we will watch most anything martial arts related. <laughs> and yes, yes I know I that's not really fair, but like I watch a lot of movies I don't like and I watch them because they're martial arts movies and I hope there's good martial arts in there. I think they made it for the, I think Scott's mostly right. I think they made it for the people who were around in the eighties and the nineties and maybe thought they wanted to try karate. And then they found like the younger kids were like, Oh, that looks really cool. Like, so I think the, 
I think our demographic, and granted mine's slightly younger than yours, I think we were incidental because they know that they could pull us in if they make a good show for everybody else. That's a great point, and one that I hadn't even really considered. I I would agree with that. I'd agree with that. The But the only thing that stuck out to me that maybe they weren't trying um, specifically to get us because, you know, yeah, you're, you're definitely right. Master good. All I'll watch, I'll watch all kinds of movies that are terrible. Um, but one thing that stuck out to me and I, I actually jotted this down at some point was I wondered if the people who wrote this and maybe obviously uh, Johnny and uh, Daniel, I wondered if they've, done martial arts because there's certain things in here that they could have come across as chintzy cheesy you know uh, um you know you know little nuggets of wisdom that you can get off of a meme but these came across as very well said very well set up delivered and there's times when i wondered it's like man i wonder if they've done martial arts before because they just they they put them in there so well they wrote them in so well you know those little philosophical things of you know whether you're talking about the concepts of balance or or you know striking first and of course you know that's a that's a it's a throwaway line on the wall in in Cobra Kai dojos but the way that they talk about those kinds of things and I, I just I just have to wonder about that. Because some of it came across as too true. Hmm. I don't know that they did. I think that some of that's just, for all they never had huge commercial success outside of the Karate Kid, that uh, I think that's just good acting. Because I don't think Pat Morita, who is probably everybody's vision of the iconic sensei in every <laughs> sense of the word, had much martial arts training. He just understood the presence in he, mm-hmm. I think the writers and the people who are doing the work behind the scenes have the martial arts experience, and they just trust the people that are portraying it on camera to get the mood right. Because you're right, like, strike first, strike hard, no mercy. That is terribly cliche in most martial arts things, although there's lots of good points behind it when you watch the show and see how Johnny explains it to people. I think that you just trust the actors more than assume that they've experienced the message in a way that allows them to portray it accurately. But that leads us to the fact that somebody, or at least the belief, that somebody, or more likely multiple somebodies involved with the show, do have an extensive amount of martial arts experience of training. Because, yeah, there's certainly a feel to this that is quite authentic, and something that was lacking from the other all the other movies. I mean, when we get right down to it, we didn't get any perspective on what it was like to be a martial arts student in a class. You know, we worked from that one-on-one archetype of the student and the teacher, and and even in the 2010 remake, that's what we saw. But here, we're seeing Johnny teaching a class, and we see some things that as a marsh, as someone who's had a school, as someone who does teach, and, and I know both of you teach, we've seen goofy stuff happen as we're teaching a martial arts class. And I don't know about you, but there were some things that <laughs> happened in those class scenes that made me say, you know what? Somebody in here doing some of this writing has taught a martial arts class before, or at least observed one quite a bit, because this is ridiculous and yet authentic. <laughs> yeah, some some uh, interesting things do happen on the floor sometimes. There are some things that happen that I am very glad never happened to me because I don't know that I would have stuck with martial arts. <laughs> I don't want to give anything away, but I don't like getting stuff thrown at right. me. And of course, anybody who's listening that has seen the show in entirety is nodding along saying, yes, no, I I, I don't think I wanted those things to happen either. One of you spoke to the fact that we'll watch pretty much anything. And really, when you get right down to it, there are only two forms of visual entertainment 
that are notorious for having a rabid fan base despite terrible plots. And one of those types of entertainment is martial arts. If we go back a couple years now, actually, when, when Into the Badlands was starting to come out, one of the things that I saw happening t- to early episodes as they were airing was this criticism of anything and everything under the sun, much in the way that martial artists are notorious for criticizing each other and really anything and everything we can because, you know, we are effectively a bucket of crabs and and can't let anyone else have nice things. (laughs) For those of you that don't, that don't don't get that cliche, um, the idea that if you have a bucket of crabs and one of them starts to climb out, rather than it actually making it out, the other crabs will pull it back in in their own efforts to escape the bucket. Yeah, yeah, you don't say on that. I, I'm a Kempoist. Of course, I know that one. Now, when I was talking about Into the Badlands on those episodes, I was talking about our need as a martial arts community to support this show because it was the first show that was coming out that really featured martial arts as a a linchpin to the series. Of course, there are fight scenes and pretty much anything on television these days, nearly every movie, but that doesn't make those television shows and movies martial arts entertainment. Into the Badlands is a martial arts show, and here we are, we're on season three now, and it's doing well. Could this be an example, Cobra Kai, of another martial arts show coming out? Can we call this a martial arts show? I I don't know how you can't call it a martial arts show. Um, it's a martial arts show wrapped up in family drama. And family is a big part of it. Um, you know... Uh, you know, family for Johnny, family for Daniel, those concepts are big on both sides of that, uh, both sides of that coin, I guess, if you want to call it that. But it's a martial arts show. It, all the way through. I think sort of to Scott's point is, I think it's a more needed martial arts show than Into the Badlands was, because it doesn't, because Into the Badlands while martial arts is very integral to the pot, like it's used for killing and it doesn't talk about the parts of martial arts that we need spoken of more, which Cobra Kai does in a very accurate way of this is the values you have. These are the values that you're going to learn doing this, whether they're skewed with a little, I was taught this way. This is the way I'm going to teach you aspect of it i think cobra kai is kind of the show that will get more people in the martial arts than into the badlands could just because of how it's portrayed like this is a class this is potential of what you're going to find you're going to go to tournaments you're going to develop a relationship with your instructor that i know i have with my instructor and i know jeremy has with his instructor because we both started young enough that they quickly become someone who we're almost more willing to turn to than our parents. And that's something that you don't necessarily find from Into the Badlands. Mm -hmm. And that's a perfect segue. When we've talked about the Karate Kid, when we've talked about Enter the Dragon, to a lesser degree, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, these are moments in time where these shows come out, they sort of transcend their martial arts but they're martial arts in a very approachable way that anyone who has owned a martial arts school at those points in time saw the impact. They saw the increased enrollment. Could this be one of those phenomena that creates greater interest in martial arts participation among the general public? I absolutely hope it is. Yeah, um, I hope it is, but, but, but will it? Is, I think it can. Is it, that, is it that broadly appealing? I think it can. Um, you know, we talked about the fact that, um, you know, whatever the viewership numbers are, and I don't know what the exact numbers are anymore, but apparently they're pretty astounding. Uh, YouTube read 
uh, read somewhere that they were absolutely floored. Like they thought it would do well, but they, but you know, well for YouTube Red and well for Netflix are two different definitions. But I think that uh, my understanding is they are absolutely floored at the response, which almost makes me wonder if, you know, our Netflix and you know Hulu and Amazon are they kicking themselves for not going harder after the show? Because, you know, as you know, the the people pitching the show. I mean, even if YouTube was deciding to throw, you know, an absolute semi truck full of cash at them, I, I would imagine they had to wonder, like, okay, but is this going to be the platform that's going to to be? Uh, uh, is it going to be big enough to put our show out there? But you know, maybe they maybe they needed a shot. Um, you know, they wanted to, and you know, YouTube was willing to literally let them do whatever they wanted to do you know um you know i don't know what the story is behind there but i know that they've been absolutely floored with the response so yeah i think this can be one of those shows that or shows or movies or uh, cultural phenomena that can get kids interested in martial arts absolutely i i don't know how big it'll be compared to some of those other phenomena points but I think this would be one where, you know, there's a spike on that on that meter. I don't know how good it would do for people who've never done martial arts before, because I don't know how geared it is to get them into a class. And I don't know if that's something that they take into account. I think that where it would have its most success is people who are on a martial arts hiatus. And we're kind of like, I still mm-hmm. want to try it. I don't know. You know, I don't really have the time. I think that this will get those people off their keisters and back into a school, whether it's karate, whether it's an art they did before or something completely different. Because I think it's made for, I think it's more made for people who want to do martial arts again more than people who want to do martial arts to start with. Oh, 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 that, that, so what you guys may or may not know, the two of you and what listeners likely do not know is that as I'm recording interview episodes, I have a piece of paper next to me and I'm constantly listening for the quotes that you hear at the beginning of the episode. What, what is that, that nugget that might help people think, oh, this is an episode I want to listen to. And if this was that type of episode, you just said it. This well, is a show designed to get people back in the martial arts. And I think when we think about the number of people in this country, in the world, who have done martial arts at one time or another, I'm sure you both hear it. And, and when we did the, you know, uh, uh, stuff martial art is here episode, episodes, Mm-hmm. Was that one or two? That was two of them. That was two. Okay, yeah. yeah, that was the one that we split between martial thoughts and here, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Can you can you tell that I I do a lot of this and I can't always keep <laughs> track of it? <laughs> one of the things that we talked about on those episodes was the fact. Oh yeah, I used to do karate. I used to take taekwondo. It's it's a pretty common occurrence. A lot of people have done martial arts for six to twelve months. Maybe this will get people fired up what do you think I absolutely hope it will <laughs> absolutely i think it um it, it it does a good job of of you know um showing it for the right and the wrong reason so to speak but in ways that even the wrong reasons or the you know whichever main character and i say kind of both they're both main characters um, I think Johnny's the one and, and Daniel's the one a, I guess, uh, it, it, but both characters, they have their good and their, I don't want to say bad, but maybe misguided moments. Um, and, but I think it shows, it makes you feel like, you know, that was good. That was a good thing for me. Um, I mean, heck it, you know, it made it in, you know, I do martial arts actively and it made me like man i can't wait to get to the studio tonight 
you know, as stupid as that sounds, no, I think it evokes that feeling for sure. I think for me, a big part of what it did and what I really enjoyed is it brought back that martial arts relationship between student and instructor. Like if you think about Miguel and Johnny's relationship, it was fun watching kind of the melding of how Johnny learned karate from Kreese way back in the 80s to how he has to teach it now because Miguel is, I don't want to say a much weaker, I think he's a much less tolerant person of being treated poorly for all that he's bullied at school constantly. I think that he needs someone to change because he wants to do this and he wants to do it with this person. So I need Johnny to be what I want him to be. And I think Johnny does a decent job of actually evolving and taking the good out of the bad lessons that he learned when he was training full time. I I can hear you choosing your words carefully, trying not to give anything away. And one of the things that I'm, I'm struggling with is, is that as well. And I'm wondering, you know, and and maybe we could get some feedback from this from folks listening. Would you be interested in in a, a, let's call it a spinoff, maybe occasional, or heck, if there was enough demand, maybe a multi-episode podcast on Cobra Kai. We, we have the power. We can do that. I totally want to do a spoiler episode. I would love to do a spoiler episode. Because <laughs> this is really difficult sometimes. Well, let, let's, let's keep that in mind when season two comes out. You know, maybe we'll, we'll look at doing something like that. And maybe, you know, we can, we can set up a schedule. I, I, can, I can see some, some fun things that could come out of that. Because typically when people do podcasts that are on specific shows, they're generally weekly shows. Something that the, the podcast is meant to fill in that time in between. Mm-hmm. But of course, I would assume, as with season one, we would get all the episodes at once and maybe it would force us to slow down. You know, we could watch and then record, watch and then record. Yeah. Lots of options. Lots of options. I... And, and, oh, yeah. and I can see some things that we could do for audience participation. So here we are. We've been, we've been talking about this for a little while and we should at least start considering winding it down. We've talked today about the hopeful impact that this show will have on the martial arts. We've talked about how it relates to the original movie. We've talked about, you know, what might have been going through the heads of the people responsible for making it as it was starting to come together. What have we missed? What haven't we talked about? What were some of your favorite parts from the show? Like, what were those moments that just kind of made you chuckle, made you reminisce? Like, what were your highlights? And obviously in his vague and specific yeah. ways you can. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm yeah, that's difficult to contemplate that for for a moment. I think um and this actually doesn't give anything away, but I think it's important to say my one of my favorite and least favorite moments was the moment where Ralph Macchio, Johnny, I'm sorry, Danny, went to Miyagi's grave. Now in the show, Miyagi has passed away. The character who played him, Pat Morita, has passed away. The date going on there was rather arbitrary. But it was not the date that Pat Morita died. I actually looked that up too. And and it that kind of... that to me that seemed like a no brainer. And the fact mm-hmm. that they didn't do that um bothered me a significant amount and I'm not sure why. Maybe you because mean it, it bothered se- you that it bothered you that they didn't use his actual death yeah. date? Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe just because it, it... Let's be honest. If if Pat Morita had been anybody else in that movie, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have played as well. Yeah. He is, to me, the single most important character. And there are very, very few people who could have played that character. Yeah. Yeah. So for them not to use that date felt like, eh, like, like not getting it. And, and, and I just, I'm sure there's a reason because it's such an obvious thing that, that maybe there's something I'm missing. I don't know. 
but the fact that they did find a way to mention him. And of course, as you already mentioned, so I'd say all the flashbacks, you know, yeah, it, that's yeah. been, I think those were my favorite moments, the way that they related the show back to the movie in a way that, let's be honest, somehow it wasn't cheesy to use flashbacks for probably the first time I've ever seen. Yeah. I will say one of my favorite moments in everything had nothing to do with martial arts. It had to do when um, Johnny test drove the car and Daniel could find nobody else to go with him, so he had to do it himself. That yeah. moment just made me giggle because it's two people who very clearly don't like each other finding things that make them not so different. Mm. And just and the radio, them. the radio while they're the, while they're test oh, driving. Yeah, yes. that, that was that was awesome. <laughs> that was one of my favorite moments ever. Absolutely. Um, my uh, trying to keep that 800 foot view on this show, uh, admittedly much harder than it sounds. Um, the big thing for me, and, and this is something that I think all martial artists can talk about, you know, uh, you know, I do Kempo, I do Taekwondo and I do combat Hapkido and we talk about those arguments you find online, you know, my art's better than your art. My instructor could beat the crap out of your instructor type stuff. You know, you know, it sounds like we're all in, you know, third grade or whatever. And um, what I like about the way they did the show is I think they did a even better job than I feel like the, the original movie was kind of like a, okay, here's your good guys. And here's your bad guys. And and even though, you know, uh, um, Mr. Miyagi was, you know, there's there's no bad students, just bad teachers and kind of putting it on Crease, not on Johnny so much. Um, but this show did a better job of showing that just because you have a different way doesn't mean you can't get or at least attempt to get to the same spot. You know, Miyagi-Do karate you know, or, or, or Daniel's karate or whatever you want to call it is, you know, all about, you know, it's very well presented. It's, this is the foundation. This is the way we do this. This is why we do this this way. And of course, Cobra Kai's, uh, philosophy is very well fleshed out throughout the, the show. And, and you can see the good points in both sides of it. You can see, you know, that, you know, the way Johnny is trying to help Miguel, he's getting bullied you know, and all this stuff. So is that bad that he's trying to help him be stronger? Um, you know, not take it from, you know, from these kids and stuff like that. So there's, there's so many different martial arts in the world. And, and I don't, I I've never understood the argument of mine is better than that, or this one is better than that. If, if this one works for you and it gives you what you want, good, simply good. If, if you want, all you've ever wanted was competition and you find an art that gives you a competition oriented martial art. Congratulations. Great. All, I mean, I'm happy for you. If you wanted hardcore self-defense, well, there's plenty of those out there too, but to find that thing in you to, to, to complete, uh, to find that, that art that gives you what you want. Maybe it's Cobra Kai for some, maybe it's uh, uh, Daniel's karate or Miyagi's karate. And I really like how they did that in the show. That it wasn't a, this one's good, this one's bad. It's, this one's this way, and this one's that way. All right. Let's wrap it up here. If you had to put a numerical score on this. First, let's decide on a rating system. Mm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm about as nerdy as they get, so I tend to default to the 1 to 10 kind of thing. Um, you know, if, if we had to rate this on a scale of one to 10, 10 being perfect, what score would you give this? I'd give it a nine. Like it hit a lot of things. It still has, has some room for improvement for me. And granted, I haven't rewatched the series yet and I might do that before my month is up, but it, it's a rock solid, darn near perfect for me. Like, 
it gets a good rock. It gets a good nine. I'd have to. I, I'm. I'd say nine point five, and and for those basically those same reasons. Um, there is one character in this show that I. I have I've written it down a couple times where I'm trying to figure out what the purpose of this character is. Um other than to be just a pure annoyance and it's it's uh uh, uh no I can't say it never mind. Um <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the whole time I'm just trying to figure out what this character's purpose is. Maybe it's a long play, boy, I hope it is. But um other than that, I really don't know I really have almost zero gripes of any of any legitimacy, and and I mean I I I'm I've watched it twice already. I'm ready to watch it again with third time with my son. Is that good? Well, if I'm going to attempt to be objective and separate, you know, my emotional <laughs> response from it, it's still an eight to a nine. But and, and this is going to come up in another episode, uh, possibly episode three hundred. There were some things that came up for me emotionally in watching this that I've been trying to mm. articulate my entire life. I finally figured some stuff out from watching this show. Um, not to say that it's therapy, <laughs> but the entire time I was watching it, I felt like this show was written for me. Did you feel like it helped you crystallize some things you already kind of were there but you hadn't put it all together i wasn't even asking the questions yeah this no i I, this helped me ask the question and answer it i picked up on uh some of that i'm I'm gonna assume we're talking about the same thing um you know with the uh the the very obvious um pop culture context of bullying and what it is today um it's almost like it stays the same, but the technology changes. There was some and, stuff around the bullying, but that that actually wasn't wasn't what it was for me. Oh, okay. All right. Well, um, I should know. I should have done some research, but I didn't. When does have, have do we have a date for season two yet? Twenty nineteen is all they said. What son of a gun? I know. <laughs> I oh, was this thinking, is the I was like, problem with them. Yeah. Shows released like that, binging them. This this is ugh. This is the worst. Oh, it's it's like that with the Marvel shows um, on Netflix, and it's like, you know, it's like, oh gosh, when is the next Daredevil coming out? Is there, you know, or I don't know when it, you know, but they've got to get this one now, and then now this one's in line, and yeah, yeah no, it's it's terrible. Somebody, and and honestly, Marvel is probably the only media conglomerate that has the diversity to make this happen but imagine if they were to link it all together you know so daredevil comes out and then you know maybe the next few weeks of like agents of shield on tv you know kind of continue the story and then maybe it drops out a little bit to a you know a major motion picture in the theaters and then you know then jessica jones comes out on netflix and then i think there's even something on hulu or whatever but you know like if you want to really go deep with the plot, you can follow it through on, on all the various channels. Mm-hmm. But no, I... unfortunately 2019. Mm. All right. Well, that means I'm going to have to watch it again a few times. <laughs> oh, darn. I'll watch it. I'll watch it in reverse. <laughs> Pret- pretend it's a, one big flashback. <laughs> I, I don't know how, I don't know if that works well, but let me know, because uh, I'm probably going to, like I said, I'm probably going to end up watching a third time here with my uh, with my son and my daughter. Right on. Well, I'm curious to hear what their feedback is. How old is your daughter? You mentioned your son was 10. She's nine. She's okay. nine, and, and uh, uh, my son's 10, so. Okay. Well, maybe we can get a review from the two of them, see what they thought. All right. Of course, we talked about a bunch of stuff today, so if you're new to this show, you can find links to quite a few episodes that we referenced previously whistlekick martial arts radio.com of course we will link to the episodes from master goodall and sensei bolin because they've both been on the show before but i want to thank everybody for for tuning in and thanks for joining me today gentlemen my pleasure glad to do it all righty i hope you enjoyed that conversation 
If you did, if you want even more, you can stick around now for the solo, the bonus content, sort of the behind the scenes. That's really what this is. I'm, I'm giving you behind the scenes because in a sense, I messed up, but I'm going to share it with you anyway, because why not? What's the worst that could happen? You could not listen to it. Well, I've already spent the time recording it, so I might as well share it with you. Check it out. And I hope you get some value out of it. I'm not going to do a separate outro at the end. I kind of already rolled one in there. So if you are going to shut off now, I want to thank you for listening. But you're not going to get the trademark sign off unless you listen to the whole darn thing. (laughs) Hope you're having a great day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Here it is, episode 297 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today, I'm going to give you a completely unscripted, uneven noted review, first impressions of the new YouTube Red series that follows along the storyline of Karate Kid, Cobra Kai. A couple of quick notes before I get into that, though. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and you can find the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com because I am one of the least creative persons ever persons see maybe i'm creative because i just made up words actually i think that's a word it's like a legalese word anyway you can go there and you can find other episodes and other stuff you can sign up for the newsletter you can get a link to whistlekick.com which is where we sell stuff that if you're a traditional martial artist you would be interested in from apparel to training gear to accessories to more stuff there's always more stuff coming so if you're listening to this in the future there will be more stuff than what I'm recording it because that's what companies try to do. We try to grow and we are growing. All right, so here we go. Cobra Kai, the series that I suspect created more YouTube Red signups than anything Google and YouTube could have imagined. And if you're not aware of what I'm talking about with YouTube Red, YouTube Red is YouTube's paid service. It allows you access to certain premium content like the Cobra Kai series, as well as the ability to save shows, to listen to things in the background. If you're a fan of YouTube for music, then you might be interested in YouTube Red. It's $9.99 a month with a 30-day trial, at least as of right now. Now, I listened, not listened, I watched the entire Cobra Kai series in a day. 10 episodes, 22 minutes apiece. You know, so they're they're stacking it as if it could have been on television and had commercials because a 30-minute show is actually 22 minutes of content, if you didn't know that. And it was really good. I'm going to talk about why it was really good, talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, some of my emotional responses, some of some other thoughts. But just going in, I enjoyed it, and I found myself unable to really step away. Now, part of that is because I didn't have to try that hard. Because with the sheer number of people that reached out looking for my feedback on Cobra Kai, I felt like I had to get that done. I had to be able to answer those questions. I had to be able to put together this episode, which unfortunately is coming out later than I wanted it to. If I had really been on my game, I would have been able to watch the day it came out and had one of the first reviews out. Because, you know, I feel kind of like we, we should here at Whistle be able to do that. But just because of the way my schedule was falling, it was days before I could get to it. It was nearly a week after release before I could get to it. But I moved everything around and I plowed through, got some solid couch time, I think about three hours that day. Not all at once. I bounced back and forth. I got my other work done. But I didn't hate it. I hated sitting that long, but I didn't hate what I was watching. In case you're concerned, I'm absolutely not going to give away any spoilers, not one, because I hate when people do that. I assume if you're interested, you've probably seen a trailer or two kicking around the web. It is not a spoiler to say that Cobra Kai as a series follows along with Danny and Johnny many years later as they're adults. I believe they make some references to specifically how old they would be, but I don't remember. I'm going to say 40s, 50s. And they have their lives, and their lives have been very separate. But then, of course, because it's what creates the conflict that drives the show, their lives come back together once again. There are a ton of things happening in this show that fans of the Karate Kid movies are going to love, especially the first one. I don't think it's any secret to say 
that the Karate Kid movies got worse. There's something really magical about the first one. The second one does okay. The third one, eh. And it just kind of goes down from there. And of course, the remake, the Kung Fu remake with Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan, doesn't follow in that universe, so it's really not part of this conversation. Of course, Pat Morita is no longer with us, so he is not in this series. I suspect that he would have been. Now, there are a couple things that I find really interesting on the back end. First off, um, while there is a lot of homage paid to the original film, there are even some kind of flashbacks, some excerpts of that movie brought into it for context, which is surprisingly effective and well done. I'm not a big fan of flashbacks when they happen in TV shows and movies. They feel abrupt most of the time. This felt pretty good. It seemed to work. Um, I felt like the complete lack of really reference to Pat Morita as a person was disappointing. For example, there's a moment where we see a, a tombstone for Miyagi. And the date that they have Miyagi dying is not the date that Pat Morita passed away. And that just surprised me because it felt like it would have been a really obvious, easy way to pay homage to that man, to the man that really made the Karate Kid movies what they were. Um, it would have been really hard to have nearly anyone else play that role and had that movie as effective to balance out Ralph Macchio's character. So, found that disappointing. Um, of course, anyone who's listened to the show knows my respect, my love for Sensei Fumio Demura. And while he may or may not have been invited, I know nothing about that back end there. Um, I still feel like there could have been a way to reference him. You know, I didn't see any of that kind of fun Easter egg stuff that I think I would have liked to see as someone who has watched that movie so many times. Now, that is not to say that this show doesn't pay homage incredibly effectively. The relationships between some of these characters are very similar to the same as Miyagi and Daniel. The student-teacher relationship as portrayed in that first movie is honored and repeated. Not exactly. It's not... It doesn't feel derivative. It feels similar, but stands on its own. And I think that that's the summary I would give of this series, is that it, it is not derivative. It is not the same thing over again. Because if we were to do the same thing from an early 80s movie as a TV show now, it would be derivative. It would be hokey. And people wouldn't want to make it through the first couple episodes. But it's not. It is very modern, but without being out of left field. If you are at all familiar with the stories from the movies, this is going to feel like a continuation. And that is the part that I was most excited for and most fearful of, that they would take this thing that I loved as a kid, honestly, that I still love as an adult, and ruin it. Now, we're not going to give anything away here to say that the fight scenes in these shows aren't going to win any awards. But I will say that I appreciated the way they were done. This isn't high wire work. This isn't Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. But what it is, is some simplicity. Some of the very hallmarks of the Karate Kid movies with at times, some solid martial arts come through here. The choreography is very appropriate to the story and to the way the story is told. And I think the last thing I want to talk about, because I know that we've got some plans to bring on a roundtable to talk about the show, and I know we're going to get into way more detail. The thing I want to talk about, the most important thing for me, 
is that I feel like this series was made for me. I feel like I'm, in a sense, the exact person that they had in mind. I'm not saying personally that when they made this series, they said, this is for Jeremy. But here I am. I'm in my late 30s. I grew up with these movies. I grew up with martial arts. While I don't have children of my own, the ages of the children in the movies, uh, I'm sorry, in the show, are close to the ages that I would have, most likely, if I had kids. A lot of my friends have kids similar in age. A lot of the challenges happening in people's lives and people's professions are similar to challenges that happen in my life. And that makes these shows incredibly relatable. There are elements in there that I think people of all ages would appreciate. But when I look at these shows, I don't see them made for people who didn't grow up with the Karate Kid movies. I don't know that someone, you know, who's 10, 12 years old right now is going to enjoy these shows as much. And honestly, there, there's a bit of content in there that, you know, mostly language that, you know, kind of pushes it into that PG-13 t- slot. And I just, I don't see 13 to 15 to 17 year olds digging this. And that's okay. But when I watch it, I feel inspired. I have similar feelings that I had as a kid watching the Karate Kid movie and watching some of these other movies from the 80s, you know, Van Damme, and these other films that made me proud to be a martial artist. And let's face it, there isn't a lot of content these days that makes us proud to be martial artists. Now, I don't know the martial arts skill and, and context that all of the people behind the show have. And interestingly enough, Will Smith is behind this movie in part. But somebody, somewhere, at least one person, gets it. They've done it right. They've done a great job. And my hope now is that there is a season two and that it's done as well. There are some surprises throughout. There are some people that pop in that you might not have expected. And I was pleasantly surprised at the complexity of the characters. You may be familiar with the sort of alternative theory of the Karate Kid that Daniel is actually the villain. That first came out uh, from an episode of How I Met Your Mother, and actually we've talked about it at least once on the show, and I think I found video and embedded it in one of the show notes pages. I, I forget which one. Frankly, it doesn't really matter, but because I, I, I just gave it to you. That, that's the theory, is that, you know, if, if you watch each situation, you know, it's really, it's Daniel's the villain and Johnny's the hero. Well, this show kind of plays on that. There are not super defined traditional hero and villain positions, protagonist and antagonist. You could argue every character from episode to the next, who is it that is is on the right path? And I think that that is something that is refreshing, something I like to see. Because let's face it, life is complicated. Our lives are complicated, and none of us make the right decision all the time. Alrighty. I'm going to leave it there. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to know what you think of these shows if you've watched them. And if you haven't watched them, I would encourage you to. Because if you're a fan of this show, you're probably going to enjoy these shows. Now, if you're refusing to, or you know, you stopped part way if you didn't like them, I want to know that too. I want to know how these shows, how Cobra Kai connects with you as a martial artist. You can leave comments on the show notes page at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can email me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. You can comment on social media related to this episode. We're at Whistlekick. Lots of good options for that. So I want to hear from you. That's all I've got for today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.